All right, I want to do a quick video here on uh, on microphones. Had some questions come up. I just did a, I guess a couple weeks ago, did a thing on my PA and the DBX drive rack and some other stuff and had some folks sending me some questions um, asking about microphones, what microphones I use, what kind of music we play and stuff like that. So, uh, and I also got a new GoPro uh, and it, I wanted to test doing a video in 4K. So that's hopefully we'll get some really good quality here. Um, anyway, my wife and I uh, do um, a lot of acoustic kind of stuff and so we use the primarily uh, in, in quiet rooms we don't have the whole band playing we use the Neumann KMS 105 which I can't say enough about uh, we both use the Shure KSM 9s for a couple years I did I never had a chance to a B them so I just went with the KSM 9 because just on some uh, on a hunch basically and then also on some feedback from some people that I trust but it's and it's a great microphone uh, but I happened to play a gig with a, 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 our guitar player, um, had one and brought it out, played half of the gig with the KSM-9, took a break, plugged in the KMS-105, and it was all over after that. It just is a, a, a fantastic mic, just really, really great sounding. Um, uh, it, when it's noisier, uh, playing with a band and, and uh, all that kind of fun stuff, we go with the, with the Audix OM7s. Um, they're great microphones, um, very resistant to, to feedback, they sound good. Uh, they have a nice kind of low end, uh, low mid, um, so I got a little bit of a little bit of heft there. Um, and then, as as I mentioned, uh, you can crank monitors up, and you can and uh, uh, you do have to know, uh, and you have to be comfortable with an OM7 to to eat the mic a little bit, really a lot. Uh, you pretty much have to have your your mouth on the microphone um, for it to be effective. Um, you, these are not microphones that you can work really well. Certainly not like a KMS105. Um, and I have two of those, just like I, I have three of the, of the KMS 105s. I tend to buy them whenever they see people unloading them. Um, so I've got three of those, uh, and I've got an OM7. This OM7 I've had for probably close to 20 years. I used this um, back when I played music uh, in college, and uh, this was uh, the microphone that I used um, every night, basically, for, for about five years. Uh, and it's great. So, And then I also have a Shure SM7B here that I'll show, because one of the things I wanted to talk about and there's plenty of reviews on this, but this uh, contraption over here is called the Cloud Lifter. Um, and basically what it does uh, is it uses 48 volt phantom power and converts that into 25 dB of really clean gain. Uh, and that's great for these OM7s, great for an SM7B because they're very uh, low uh, output um, uh, microphones for a number of different reasons. But typically you have to crank the gain up. So on the, on the console here, you can see I've got a monitor mix set up. And I've got three channels. The first channel is the KMS-105. The second channel is this Audix with the, that's not connected to the uh, cloud lifter. And the third is the Audix that's connected, the OM7 that's connected to the cloud lifter. And you can see the difference in the gain structure here. This is pretty standard. Uh, and these, this, is the on, this is the Mackie DL-1608. So it has the Onyx preamps, which are, which are really pretty good for, for a live console. Um, in fact, I, you know, I have this, the, the OM7, on the channel that's not connected to the cloud lifter. I mean, it's what I would consider eight out of 10, basically. Uh, and you don't really hear any hiss or noticeable anyway in uh, for that particular channel. But while the cloud lifter, uh, at least reading the materials, doesn't um, certainly doesn't impart any coloration, for me, it cleans the microphone up. Um, I, don't know, I don't know what the right terminology is for that, um, but it just, uh, it just, it's a better sound to me. Um, not like significant, considerable, um, but it tends to clean it up, especially kind of the low mid sort of thing um, with the OM7 particularly. And so I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of walk, I'll talk through the channels. You can hear I'm using a kind of the cheapest wedge that I have. It's this Pro uh, wedge, which is actually a pretty good wedge. Um, but just to give you an idea um, of what these microphones all sound like. So if I go to the to the KMS 105, and hopefully this translates fairly well with the GoPro camera. Just super clean. Um, you know, I've, I've EQ'd for the garage a little bit, so a little bit of the high end's taken out, but for the most part, the EQ is relatively flat um, for each of the channels. And uh, and you can see, it's a great sounding microphone. Just sounds really, really good. A lot of just very natural. It sounds like me, uh, exactly like me. Just uh, 
through a microphone. So if we go to the OM7 here, so this is the OM7, you can see once again, you can see where the gain is, and sounds really good. You know, there's this kind of low mid thing with the OM7 uh, that I, depending on the singer, might, might EQ out a little bit. Um, but once again, relatively flat uh, EQs um, for these microphones. Uh, so you can see here, not, not a lot of noise, not, you know, this is right pretty much where it would be. If you look at the, at the channel strip there, I mean, ha, I mean, you get a little bit of a bump. I might have the input gain down a little bit, um, but that's what that sounds like. So we'll mute that channel and we'll go over here and you can see the difference once again in the gain structure. And, and this is the OM7 with the cloud lifter. Now, I don't know if you can hear on the, on the GoPro, but it's just cleaner. I don't know what, I don't know how to describe it. In that low mid thing, it's a little cleaner. It's a little crisper on the high end. Exactly the same channel EQ uh, is the other OM7. And, uh, and I just tried to get the levels, you know, about the same in terms of where they're coming in from the input. So can't, you know, really say enough about, uh, about the cloud lifter there. And so I'll, I'll pause the, the video and I'll switch over to the SM7B and you can kind of hear the same difference. I'll plug it into the channel with no cloud lifter, plug it into the channel with the cloud lifter and just kind of give you a, an idea of what that sounds like. All right, so let's take a look at the 7B uh, real quick. So I've got it uh, hooked into the channel right now with no, um, it's not connected to the cloud lifter. So if we just do, the 7B, you can see a uh, good sound of microphone, but in this case, if you look at the channel strip, I probably would actually even give it some extra gain. Hey, hey, could probably come up just a titch, maybe. It's probably okay right there if you had a really strong singer. But anyway, you can see what that sounds like. So now we'll switch it over to the, uh, to the other one. So now we're over on the so now we're over on the cloud lifter. And again, you can see plenty of gain here. Hello, hey. And we're, you know, about half, maybe a little bit more than half with the 7B. And the same kind of thing, I don't know what it is. It's just a little less low end boominess, a little cleaner, a little crisper um, through the cloud lifter, I don't know. I just, uh, it's a pretty, pretty cool box and uh, I like it a lot. But anyway, um, those are the microphones that I use. Um, don't really use the SM7B live, but I do have a little studio in my office and I use it, uh, I use it in there from time to time. But, uh, but that's really it. Um, I do have, in my little mic case down here, I do uh, carry an OM5, uh, which is also a great vocal microphone, but it doesn't need the cloud lifter. It's got uh, plenty of gain. Um, I use the Audix D6 for a kick drum when, when micing a big kit. It's also great. My brother-in-law plays a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a cajon uh, when we do some acoustic stuff. And it's really great if you take some material like this, put it in the bottom of the cajon, and then just lay this microphone in there. Uh, it sounds really good for that. Of course, the Beta 57, uh, a couple RTA mics, um, these Bayer MC, I think these are 930s. Um, these are great for overheads or whatever. I mostly use those in the studio. Same thing here. I've got a Neumann um, KM 184. Mostly studio stuff. Sometimes gets used live. And then of course a couple Sennheisers here. The, the tried and true. Um, these are the 906s, yeah, that I use for mic and guitar cabinets and stuff. So that's really it. That's it for the, from a microphone uh, perspective. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed that.